Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Ignite Institute of Prophetic Leadership Online Bible School. My name's Jeff Oslin. I'm one of the presenters here. And it's great that you've joined me this morning. It's a real pleasure. We're talking about the uh, Advanced Bible Course uh, by E.W. Kenyon. That's our subject this morning, and we're up to session 25. Going to be a little bit different this morning. We uh, These next uh, uh, probably four or five weeks, we're talking about the Book of Acts. Um, so uh, it's just exciting to see, um, uh, you know, branching out from the Gospels um, and uh, going through the Book of Acts and then going through the epistles uh, in the New Testament. Um, and it's uh, the Book of Acts is really a link between uh, the Gospels that, uh, that talk about uh, the life of Jesus, uh, uh, where he come from, <laughs> what he was here for, and then uh, it goes through the book of Acts and uh, starts developing uh, the church, the church is born, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, is poured out, and then it's a, a link onto the epistles uh, which des you know describe w why Jesus came and who we are, you know, w what he did for us. And, and it's a great, a tremendous link. It's a, a book of history, but it's also, uh, I've got a lot of uh, good um, uh, scripture and uh, powerful words in it um, as well. So um, the book of Acts written by Luke. Luke wrote the Gospels, uh, the Gospel of L Luke um, in, um, uh, what is it, 30, 60, 60 AD, sorry, 60 AD. Uh, and then um, he wrote the, the book of Acts in about 63 AD after Jesus uh, was born to his friend Theophilus. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a portent, an important link and it unveils the three things that we're probably going to talk about a lot. I've probably mentioned it half a dozen times this morning. But uh, the three main points in the book of uh, Acts is that Luke reveals the power of the word. Number two, the power of the name of Jesus. And number three, the power of the Holy Ghost as well. And uh, we're going to look at those three and just touch on those three. We'll go into those, those three uh, later on um, uh, next week and, and the other following weeks. But uh, powerful, uh, powerful word, powerful book, uh, the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, Luke uh, records 32 countries, 54 cities, nine Mediterranean islands and 95 different people by name. So uh, the archaeologists are continually confirming everything that uh, Luke wrote about in the book of Acts uh, and, and all the discoveries uh, that they're finding today confirms everything that Luke said about the book of Acts and, and all the, the history of the book of Acts. So it's a, a link between, like I said, between the Gospels and, and the Epistles. Uh, and he records the fact that the Gospels had moved from uh, uh, the, the, the narrow band of, of Judaism um, into the greater community. Um, you know, God uh, said that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Uh, the Jews uh, had their thinking of all flesh as being all Jewish flesh, but that's not what God wanted at all. At all. God wanted that uh, whosoever believeth uh, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, so it, it, it's, we see the, the broadening of that from the Jews uh, over to the greater community, to Jewish people as well, of course, but also to the Gentiles uh, as, as well. So that's, that, that's important to, uh, to do that. To, uh, to realize that so he reveals the role of the holy spirit in the early church uh you know um uh, the power of the holy ghost uh, able to uh, to guide and direct people and uh, lead them in the way um jesus said that that uh, when i go to the father i will send you a comforter and and he's our comforter he's our teacher uh, he's our guide he's our director our exhorter uh, and, and, and all of those things. So, um, you know, that's what the Holy Ghost does. Uh, and he's great at it. You know, if we allow him to, though, you know, quite often we never allow him to. We, you know, we just want to go and do our own thing. But uh, if we just wait on God, wait on the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost do his work. He's good at it. He's very good at it. 
Um, and uh, but uh, but we've got to be good at listening to him and being obedient to him. And um, you know, and and that's important also. Being ob- obedient, you know, it just. Um, touches on um, you know how people were obedient to the Holy Ghost obedient to the guidance and direction of the Holy Ghost uh, and, and we see that right through the book of Acts and and it's just brilliant you know powerful what what happens when uh, w- when we are obedient to what the Holy Ghost is speaking to us you know the, the, the anointing is there the anointing is there when we're off running around doing our own thing um, you know the, the anointing is you know the the, the 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 anointing can't rest upon your life um, you know it talks about the the Holy Ghost is analogy is that he's a dove and other things the water the rain you know the wind of the Holy Ghost but there's the dove of the Holy Ghost the dove of the, only, of the Holy Ghost will only rest upon you when he when they when the dove feels safe the dove will only land when he feels safe and, uh, and, 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 and that's the same in our lives. When we're running here and there, you know, the dove it, it can't rest upon you. Um, you know, you, you're, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're born again and uh, you may be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but, uh, you know, the anointing can't rest upon you because you're just running around all over the place chasing after you. Uh, I don't know what you're chasing after, <laughs> you know. But uh, but it's great when you're just settling settling God, know who you are in God, uh, allow and 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 focus on God. I come into God's presence uh, and and just allow the God, the Holy Ghost to rest upon you, that anointing to rest upon you, so that you can go and do the purpose that God's created you for in the first place. And uh, you know one of the key ingredients for that um is 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 obedience and um you know if we don't have that obedience uh we're generally running after our own chasing after our own things uh promoting ourselves you know the the holy spirit the dove of the holy spirit can't rest upon you so that's powerful so it's uh it's it reveals the role of the of the holy spirit in the early church and the mission emphasizing um, the baptism of the holy spirit and god's provision uh for empowering the church uh to uh, to proclaim the gospel um luke t- in the book of acts talks about uh, on three occasions and two other occasions when it's inferred that the um, the confirmation of the baptism of the holy spirit was the speaking in tongues and and that still is the initial evidence of the of the baptism of the holy spirit the speaking in tongues so um you know uh, if if the early church needed the uh, the baptism of the holy spirit how much more do we need the baptism of the holy spirit and uh, and the anointing uh, upon our lives uh, as well so um in acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and into the ends of the earth. Australia is about the end of the earth. I don't know where you are, but, uh, you know, the Holy Ghost uh, is powerful enough to reach you and to anoint you uh, where you are. Uh, and, and, and settle upon your life. We need that settling and that anointing of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. Great to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we need that anointing. You know, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit was upon him. He anointed me to heal the sick, uh, to uh, blind eye, open blind eyes, to raise the dead and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, how much more do we need the Holy Spirit resting upon us uh, for, for the preaching of the gospel as well? So the book of Acts um, reveals uh, the power and the impact of the word and, um, and also like those three things I mentioned, the, the word, the name of Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Um, it, the impact of the word when it's preached, the power of the name of Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2.41, then those who gladly received his word uh, that's the logo. That word there is the logos, the inspired word of God. Those who received that word were baptized, and that day about three thousand souls were added. That's after the on the day of Pentecost, three thousand souls were added to the church. Um, so even though even though the book of the epistles uh, had not been uh, had not yet been written, 
uh, you know, but, but still, uh, you know, w with the um, uh, disciples and the apostles, uh, the apostle Paul and all of that, they still brought the, the revelation that, uh, that uh, you know, that faith for salvation uh, comes uh, through faith and not through works. Um, and, and the deliverance and healing and the preaching of the word and all of that. And people were born again with that incorruptible uh, seed of the word of God and, and the power of the word of God uh, and, and the transformation of people's lives uh, came with the, um, the anointing and, and the preaching of the word and, and uh, you know, the release of the, the Rema, the anointed word of God uh, was very unique. You know, that had never happened before. You know, nothing like that had ever happened before. And I think that was uh, the thing that, that, you, that, that, uh, that God used to spread the gospel. You know, nothing like that had ever happened before. You know, when the Pharisees and the, and, uh, the priests and all of that, you know, nothing like that had ever happened to them uh, when they were preaching and um, preaching the law and trying to preach repentance and, and all sorts of other things. I don't know what they were preaching but it didn't have any effect. But, but you know, the, because the anointing, uh, it just wasn't God's, that's not God's timing. But now, now God has been poured out, the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh. And there's the anointing on, and on, the, on the logos of the word, becoming the rema of the word. And it transformed people's lives, changed people's lives. They have never seen anything like this in all Israel. And it was powerful when the, on the day of Pentecost, they said, you know, what is this? You know, are these men drunk? You know, and, and Peter got up and, and preached that powerful message about repentance. And then those, uh, those 3,000 people uh, were born again. Powerful when the, uh, when the word is preached on the anointing. And, um, you know, this was the time, you know, um, everybody was looking for this. Everybody uh, looked at, saw the, the prophecies about uh, God pouring out his spirit and that there were going to be a new covenant and it was going to be written on our hearts and, and that stony heart was going to be taken away and uh, we're going to have a heart of flesh <clears throat> and, uh, you know, powerful and people were looking for that. But a lot of other people weren't looking for that, of course. Uh, you know, the, the Pharisees uh, and the priests, you know, they were looking for it. I don't know what they were looking for, but uh, they were still looking to promote themselves and having themselves uh, in, in charge. And, and, but when Jesus comes in, when he came in on the scene, blew it all apart, and and we and that anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we also need that anointing um, upon our lives. So the preaching of the gospel consisted of the preaching of the word, the revelation of the name of Jesus, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know there was no room for false doctrine, um, and no room for denominational teaching, and no room for uh, creeds and myths. Um, even the, even the apostles' own thoughts, uh, you know, weren't, weren't weren't tolerated. You know, it, it was the the power of the word, the preaching of the word, the the power of the name of Jesus, and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what was preached, and that's what transformed lives. I don't know about you, but I wasn't born like this. <laughs> I was transformed by the power of God, transformed by Jesus when He came into my heart and came into my life. Um, I, I don't know. I, and I guess you, know, you would have been the. You all would have been the same. You weren't born the way you were. Uh, you know, I've been been a born again for quite a while, but I can still remember. You know, just the chaos and turmoil, and just the peace of God. You know, when I realised God loved me, uh, and, and the power of God came in. The pre preaching of the word transformed my life, and the, and the anointing of the Holy Ghost came into my heart and my life. And, and began to transform me and change me. And uh, isn't that amazing? See, even the, when they, uh, even the deacons, when the deacons were selected, you know, the apostle, the apostle didn't want to neglect uh, the preaching of the word and their ministry and prayer. You know, they were involved in the, in the distributing of, of, of food and, and other things in, the, in, in, um, in Jerusalem. But, uh, but then they realized that they didn't have the time for, for ministry and for prayer and, and for preaching of the word. So they elected uh, deacons who were full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, full of wisdom. And, and they elected those um, five deacons, five or seven, five deacons. And, um, you know, so they were able to devote themselves to the, to the prayer and their ministry and which was the preaching of the word. And, um, and, and the power of the word started uh, developing and, and, um, and, and started uh, evolving 
and, and it was just a, a, a big ball of fire that you, that couldn't be stopped. Uh, everybody has tried to stop the power of the gospel, uh, but nothing has ever stopped the pa- preaching of the word. So Acts uh, 6, 7, then the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient uh, to the faith. So like I said, the revelations from the Apostle Paul had not uh, yet been written, only, only some of the Gospels, and they were only the, uh, the original copies. And all they had was the Old Testament uh, with its prophecies about the coming Messiah and the disciples' uh, testimony of what Jesus said. But the Holy Spirit you know, impressed upon them uh, the importance of the preaching of the Word. Um, and, and what I mean by that was that the, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God. And we're talking about Jesus is the Word. He was the Word and, he, and, the, and God um, supernaturally inserted Jesus at the right time in history, um, you know, f- for a purpose. And, and that was the Word and, um, and, and that preaching of the Word, the preaching about ha- that God loved them. And that God sent his one and only son uh, into the world to die on the cross for them. Um, And the power of the preaching of Jesus, the power of of his word and who he said he was. And the revelation that he came from God, that God loved them enough to send his one and only son. Um, You know, I have a son, but I know he wouldn't die for you. But God has a son that was willing to die on the cross for you. And that preaching of the word jesus was the word the preaching of what jesus said all and and the testimonies and and, uh, and the signs and wonders and miracles that revealed that testified that he was the son of god and and that preaching of the word preaching of the name of jesus you know had a powerful impact uh, upon all the jewish uh, people um in israel and and um, you know that they thought like I said, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was upon Jewish flesh, but it wasn't. It was meant to be for everybody, and we'll, we'll go into that uh, and how that, the spread of the gospel um, uh, came about. Um, so all they had was the Old Testament about um, the prophecies and about the Messiah coming, and, uh, and, uh, but the Holy Spirit had pressed upon them the preaching of the Word. In Acts chapter 8, verses um, 1 to 4 then Saul was consulting to his death this is just after the um, the martyrdom of Stephen um, and the verse 1 at that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles and the devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. All the others who were scattered from the, um, from the martyrdom and, and great persecution followed what Paul was doing uh, or Saul at the time. But, you know, they, they were scattered. Uh, and, and that, you know... God is never God's intention for anybody to be martyred or to be murdered or killed. But, um, you know, these things happen. And uh, with the, um, because of people making allegiances and, and agreements with the devil and, and doing what the devil wants, you know, that's all of that's going to happen. We're going to suffer, you know, persecution and trials and tribulations and all those things are going to come against us. But uh, God will never leave us never, or never forsake us. He's always with us and, and God will use that in, and he, God used this in this circumstance to, uh, to uh, get the uh, disciples to get out of Jerusalem and, and through that they went everywhere preaching the gospel. Uh, the apostles stayed there because that was their, their main base I guess but the, all the others, you know, a lot of the others uh, went out um, every, everywhere preaching the gospel. So this is what happened in Samaria when the name of Jesus was proclaimed. In Acts chapter 8, uh, a testimony of, of that, Acts chapter 8, uh, 5 to 7, and then down in 14, then, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ there, preached, the, preached Jesus, preached the word of God. And multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, 
and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And, uh, you know, that, you know, goes on and talks about the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit when, they, when Peter and John went down to Samaria. You know, they're all born again, but they hadn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So they laid hands on them and they were all baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit powerful you know what what god was doing and god's still doing that god's still doing spreading the gospel taking uh, the gospel in in the most amazing places um and, and there's still communities and areas pockets of communities here in australia that still haven't heard the word of god and even where you are you know where but it's powerful when when god opens a door he opens the, the door that no one can close and, and I just believe that's going to happen from, uh, you know, in these, in these end times that, that the word of God is going to be preached because God is opening opportunities, opening doors that nobody else can close. Nobody can close. Nobody can close. The enemy has no authority to close the doors that God opens. But, you know, God will open the doors. But are they believers that are full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, Full of the anointing that prepared to go through those doors, and uh, and you have the church needs to be aware of that. Need to, needs to be aware of the times we're living in. That that the thing the things that God is doing, that He's opening doors, opening opportunities for us to go through, and we've got to be obedient uh, and listening to the Holy Ghost, what He's doing, what He's saying, and what He's doing, and follow after the Holy Ghost. So Peter and John preached the word of God in Samaria, in the Samaritan villages, I should say. And on their way back to Jerusalem in, in Acts chapter 10, uh, records the story of the Gentiles uh, um, and, and, you know, all that and the power of God happening there. Then in Acts chapter 10, I should say, the, the story there records um, uh, the Gentiles in um, Cornelius' house receiving the gospel for the very first time as um, as lord and savior and this see this happened some 40 years after jesus was uh, was crucified and and buried and ascended uh, but up until then the jewish and and the samaritans jews and Samaritans had received god uh received jesus but uh, god revealed uh, to peter in a dream that he must go to cornelius's house to preach the word of god and um you know and, and you know the story there while he was speaking the word of god um you know they're all baptized in the holy spirit and um and those who had came with peter and even peter himself you know couldn't believe what was happening um because you know they thought the gospel that jesus came only to die for them but uh but god loves loves the whole world god loves the whole world um you know for God so loved the world, for God's, not only the Jewish nation, but God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God, uh, Jesus came, God sent his son to die for all of us, not just the Jewish people. And, but it took a while for them to realize that, and uh, because they were just focused on, their, uh, on, on what God had done in, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, and they thought that was just a continuation of that, but it really it was God so loved the world, that whosoever. And uh, you know, it took a while for that to, to, to sink in. In Acts 10, uh, 44, 46, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. So it's just powerful, you know, when you see the unfolding of history and the, and the plan and the purpose of God, that it wasn't just for the Jewish nation, that Jesus died for the whole world. I, um, I you know, I know it's always been there. But I saw a, a scripture the other day, 1 John chapter 2, I think it's first 2 or 3 or 4, uh, where it says there that Jesus not only died for the sins of, of those, but the sins of the whole world. And, uh, you know, but that, that hadn't been written yet. And, um, but John in the, wrote that in the, in the epistles. And, and that revelation came to him when he, when he saw, you know, when he heard about the Gentiles receiving the word that, that Jesus not only died, uh, crucified and, and shed his blood for the Jewish people, but also for the sins of the whole world. So the sins of the whole world has already been dealt with. 
It's already been dealt with. All of our sins and sicknesses have already been dealt with. We've just got to appropriate our faith and reach out and believe for those things. Believe for salvation. Believe for deliverance. Believe for healing. It's already been done. It's already been purchased for us with the blood of Jesus. So we've just got to avail our faith, release our faith. God's given us the measure of faith. We're going to release that into what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So the book of Acts reveals God's plan of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh, both, both Jews and Gentiles. Three things happened um, in Cornelius' house with the preaching of the word. You know, the first thing was faith was released in their hearts. And uh, they received Jesus Christ. And then they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And they heard the word of God. And then just supernaturally, they were all heard the word, uh, born again. Faith, faith was generated when they heard the word. They were born again. They were filled with the Spirit all in the one process. You know, a lot of people, you know, have an experience and they think that their experience is doctrine. Uh, but it's not. You know, we've got to come back with what the Word says. What the Word says. And here we see, uh, you know, the, the preaching of the Word and they were uh, filled with the Word and they were saved and born again and filled with the Spirit, spoke in tongues all at the same time. You know, it's just powerful what happens. And, uh, you know, that wasn't my experience. And it probably wasn't a lot of people's experience. But it is, it is an experience that we can experience. Uh, we can see and we can believe for that to happen in people's lives uh, that, that, that we're preaching to, that we're speaking uh, into. So Acts 11, 1, Now the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. The apostles in Jerusalem, uh, you know, when they came, when, uh, when Peter came back from Cornelius' house, they heard that the, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, and that the Gentiles had started receiving the word and the baptism as well. The Jewish believers in Jerusalem were still governed, uh, you know, by their 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 thinking, their narrow mindedness. That you know that that it was uh, that God only loved the Jews or in that, uh, whatever. Um, and you know, it was some forty years after that 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 realized, you know, they they saw something happening, uh, and 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 that uh, the pouring out of all flesh wasn't only just Jewish flesh, but it was also Gentile flesh um, that that they um, that there as well. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we, the way we look at things will give it, will bring a, a false doctrine. We've got to be careful of the way we look at things. Sometimes we look at things uh, through our, our culture or through our family background and upbringing. You know, we might have been brought up and um, I know I had some funny things, but I remember mum and dad talking about Catholics in some funny strange way and I, and I had a bit of a thing against them but uh, you know I just you just got to be careful that you don't allow the way you're brought up and culture your background your cultural background uh, you know cloud your thinking and your doctrine you, you've got to become it's got to be come from the word of God and the word of God only Acts 11 19 to 21 now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose after Stephen travel as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and, um, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. See, they were still doing it. Even after Cornelius' house, they were still only just preaching the word to the Jews only. But some of them, uh, of the men uh, went with them uh, from Cyrus and Cyrene, who were there, come to Antioch and spoke and preached the word of the, of the Lord there. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Um, you know, and even the Apostle Paul, when he went on his first missionary journey, were generally only went to the Jewish synagogues. And when they started mocking him and rejecting him, some some accepted what he said, but when they started uh, mocking him and rejecting him, then he went to the Gentiles. And it was, you know, it was all of that through circumstances, you know. But but God was in that. God was a, a, in that. And, and uh, you know, uh, trials and, and situation troubles will come our way, but but they make us stronger. And they and and it causes us to listen to to listen to go back to God and 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 to search out God. Well, you know, what are you saying to me, God? Sometimes we'll face a, a hardships and and situations will come, and we think, uh, you know, 
did you say this God and we've got to go back to God and sometimes we go back to him when we find so, you know some people you know just step out and go through like the Apostle Paul he just went and, and uh, with his head down and kept going um, some of us you know we, we go back to God and we find out and we but listen we can't we can't keep going back to God if we keep going back to God we'll never go forward we've got to take a step of faith and believe God that he's directing and guiding and showing us the Holy Ghost is up upon us and revealing the way that we are to go. And we've got to take a step of faith and believe God and step out in all of that. Um, so there was a struggle there between the believers who wanted to adapt Christianity to, 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 into their Jewish thinking, uh, into Judaism. But there were other believers who, believed, who realized that, uh, you know, from the experience of Cornelius' house, that, uh, that Christianity wasn't just for the Jews, that was for everybody. Um, and so there rose a bit of a dispute there with, um, with the, the, the Jewish Christians who felt that the Christianity should only be for the Jews and for those who realized that it was for everybody, for whosoever, uh, for, that God so loved the world, that for, for whosoever. And, uh, and there rose a dissension there, you know, and there's always a trouble that that was going to happen because you, you know, Paul talked about um, in the book of Galatians, you know, he said, oh, you foolish Galatians, how come you've gone back to following after the law? You started off in the spirit, but now you've gone back to the following the law and the obedience to the law. And, uh, and we've got to be careful of that. And, 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 you know, they had to be careful of that. But, you know, there was a dispute there and, and struggling, striving and, and who the gospel was for. But, you know, but, you know, it, the power of God, the power of God and the Holy Ghost led everybody, uh, led everybody out of Jerusalem um, and, and started preaching the gospel all around the world. That the, that the um, like it was in Acts chapter one, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Um, that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and to the uttermost parts of the world. And people started getting a revelation of that. They heard that and they spoke about that and told that to everybody else. Uh, this is what God said. This is what Jesus said. Um, and, and, and they believed. They believed the word. They believed what he said and the preaching of the word of what he said because, you know, they couldn't preach so much out, so much out of the Old Testament, but they preached what, the, what Jesus had said. And, and it's powerful, the power of, what he, of the word and, and, the, and the name of Jesus. Um, so uh, the revelation and the doctrines of the Apostle Paul and the new creation and, the were, and all, the, all those things hadn't been written yet. But still, you know, God was moving and the power of the Holy Ghost uh, was still was believing uh, and moving. Acts 13, 5 to 7, And when they arrived at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they also had John as their assistant. Now, when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a, a false prophet, uh, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was from the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. You know, they didn't hear, they didn't sought to hear what they thought. They wanted to hear what the word of God, they wanted to hear what Jesus said. And, uh, and it's powerful that, uh, you know, Paul was, as like I said, Paul was a Jew and he started preaching to the Jews. But when they started rejecting him, he went out and started preaching to the Gentiles. And, and, and he probably heard about uh, the, the, what happened in the house of Cornelius. And when he realized that and, and the Holy Ghost was leading him and speaking to him and guiding, directing him, he followed after that. He was obedient to the leading of the Holy Ghost. So Paul uh, was led by the Holy Ghost to, to speak into the Gentiles. And, uh, and that, that's why, you know, we, we need to hear the word of it. We need to hear the Holy Ghost direction in, in our lives. So God's word carries faith. You know, that scripture in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And, um, you know, it's powerful. When we, and we need to hear the word of God. We need to read the word of God. And as we do that, you know, the Logos becomes a Rima word, becomes a faith word into our hearts that we can step out on. Powerful, the, the, the Logos, the written word, but we also need the Rima word of God to transform our lives, to, to step out on faith and believe what God says in his word is true. Believe what God said in his word he will do in my life and he will do in your life. 
Um, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6. God who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So, um, you know, we are sufficient as ministers. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are his ambassadors. And, uh, you know, we, we look back with Adam and Eve, they were God's ambassadors here on earth. And we've re been redeemed back to that original purpose, that we are ambassadors for God here on, on earth, to see his kingdom come, to see his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We are sufficient as ministers because the power of God lives inside of us. And we, we're led by the Holy Ghost to, to the areas where God wants to us to go. You know, God loves everybody and he wants everybody to hear the gospel. So he's impering upon us uh, to, to lead, follow after him, to be led by the Holy Ghost. See, God is, is a, you know, I know this is probably a, a funny different expression, but God is a, a spirit faith God. He's a spirit faith God. He lives in the spirit realm. We live in the physical realm, but, we, but God lives in the spirit realm and he's a spirit faith God. And he, when he comes in, inside of us at salvation, he brings his whole nature inside of us as well. So we also are spirit faith people as well. We are full of the Holy Ghost. We are full of the mind of Christ. We are full of the faith of God. God has given us the measure of faith. He's given us the faith of Jesus Christ. That supernatural faith that he gave Jesus has also been given to us. So all the things that Jesus did, we are also able to do because we are also spirit faith people. We have the measure of faith, the measure of supernatural faith living inside of us. So we step out on what Jesus has already done for us on the cross. He rose triumphantly from the grave, defeated hell, took the keys of, of hell, uh, sin and death and the grave, ascended on high and seated at the right hand of the, of the Father, interceding for us. We are able to go into the Father, into the throne room, because we are washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. So we also have that same supernatural, the measure of faith, the full measure of faith, living inside of us and it just doesn't come and go and, and flitter here flitter there go off and there it's always there within us doesn't come and go if jesus is always in your heart faith is always in your heart as well supernatural faith is always in your heart now we've got to live out of that, live out of that. You know, God has given us the measure of faith. You know, he's given us muscles to lift weights. But if you go to the gym for the very first time, you're not going to lift too much at all. But as you develop, you know, those muscles, God has given you the muscles in the first place. They don't just come from nowhere. They're already there. We already have the faith. We've just got to start using it and developing it. And I found that that faith, we, we need we, to, to develop that faith, we need to start using that faith in our everyday situations. We don't get suddenly just get born again and then we start using faith to raise the dead and heal the sick and, and cast out demons. We grow in faith. You know, there may be some people like that and I'm grateful for people that are just, you know, full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost and just get a revelation of who they are in God and what they, that, that the power of God is in us, that, that God, you know, if you look back and with Adam and Eve, I love looking at Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, that, that he um, anointed them and that he um, uh, appointed them to be, um, to rule and to reign, to, to take dominion, to take authority. And we've been, been redeemed back to that and some people get a revelation of that very quickly it took me took take, took me quite a while but uh, <laughs> but it's just amazing when you get a revelation of that you start using the faith that God has given you and you start developing that faith stepping out on faith 
that supernatural faith that God has already given you. It hasn't deserted you. It hasn't gone off somewhere else. It's still there inside of you. Start stepping out. Start using that faith as God has given you. You may not raise the dead <laughs> your very first week, but you know, we've got to start believing and using our faith in our everyday situations. And uh, a lot of people are not aware of that. You know, in your family situations, in your work situations, start using your faith in those situations. You know, when you get married, you know, that, that, uh, that, uh, that love and, and um, honeymoon feeling soon, soon wears off after a while. After a while. And, uh, you know, all these things start coming in, the offence and uh, unforgiveness and resentment against, you know, not only your, your married partner, but other people as well. And, and you realise, what is going on here? And, um, but, you know, we've got to start stepping out in faith and using our faith in those little things in life. Start develop, developing your faith like that. Don't get offended. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of faith to, to, uh, to operate in that. But that's great. That's good because we're developing our faith. It takes a lot of faith to, to get rid of unforgiveness and resentment and bitterness and, and, and all of those things because uh, a lot of things have happened to us. And, uh, you know, when we come into, a, into the kingdom, you know, we bring all of our baggage with us. But, you know, as we release our faith, we see those things going. We see those things dropping off our lives. But they're only going to drop off our lives if we release our faith and believe for those things, that God has taken those things away, that our sins have been forgiven. And all of those strongholds and addictions and, and, um, and other things have been broken and the power of those things have been broken in Jesus' name. Jesus broke the power of sin in his life. Sin tried to come on. He broke the power of sin that tried to come into his life. And when he comes in, he brings that victory. He brings the power to defeat sin in our lives as well. Paul, uh, Peter said, Be ye holy as I am holy. He was talking about when God said that in, in um, Leviticus, I think, way back in the New Testament. He was repeating exactly what he saw in the Old Testament. Be ye holy as I am holy. That's what God wants in our lives. So we've got to start stepping out in faith in the little things and those unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, hang-ups, crazy things, addictions, strongholds. Start using your faith in those areas and then, we'll, and then you will see the faith happening in those greater areas um, of, of raising the dead, raising the dead. I love to be able to do that. You know, and healing the sick, seeing blind eyes open, seeing deaf ears, see the lame walk. Powerful. But we've got to grow in our faith. Use it on those little situations around your family, around your marriage, around your work situations. Powerful when you get a revelation of that. So we have the potential to do the same things that Jesus did. We can do the same miracles that he did because we have the same supernatural faith uh, living inside of us that he used. John fourteen twelve. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. You hear that? Did you hear that? <laughs> Powerful, isn't it? The works that I do, the works that Jesus did, you will do also. And greater works than these, he will do. That's us, meaning us, because I will go to the Father. Uh, because I go to the Father. So we activate that faith in those little situations. We start using that faith and then we believe for faith for miracles as well. See, um, you know, it says, um, it doesn't say that we have to have big faith to, to, uh, to move mountains and things like that to, for miracles. It, Jesus said you only have to have faith as small as a mustard seed. And you can say unto this mountain, be lifted up and be cast in the sea and it will move for you. Start using a little faith in those areas and then we can start speaking. And then you, you start, start speaking to the strongholds. Start speaking to the, the mountains that are around your life. Start speaking to those addictions. Start speaking to those attitudes. And, uh, you know, attitude, you know, we talk about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. What about AA, addictions and attitudes? You know, we need to get rid of them as, as well. And uh, we need to start, and we just need faith as small as a mustard seed. We don't, don't need to have big faith. 
you know, we need to have faith as small as a, mu a mustard seed. See those, speak to those mountains and see them move out of your life. That's why we can do the same things that Jesus did because it just takes faith as small as the mustard seed to move the mountains. Uh, we all have that same supernatural measure of faith. And, uh, you know, we, we need to use that seven days a week. 24-7. 24-7. Not just for two hours on Sunday. Not just for two hours on Sunday. So we don't need to pray to God for more faith. If you look at back at the, the session I did on um, session 14, it says that the title of that was Why We Don't Pray for Faith. Because God has already given us the measure of faith. When he comes in, the whole nature of God comes in, that spirit faith nature comes into us. We are also spirit faith people. That supernatural faith that operated in Jesus' life operates in our life. Not a different type of faith. It's the same supernatural faith that comes to live inside of us. So uh, we don't need to pray for more faith. We just need to use the faith that we already have, already have inside of us, living inside of us. John 10.10, 10, it is with the heart that we believe. We see, we can never understand God with our mind. We can never understand, but we can understand him with our heart. And it's with our heart that we believe. He comes into our hearts, transforms our lives, fills our lives, fills our heart, fills our spirit man. And it's with the heart that we believe. You know, uh, Bible colleges are great, but, but you know, if they're not bringing a, a revelation knowledge, um, if they're not bringing the revelation knowledge from the Logos into the Rima, then they're, you know, they're failing. They're failing people badly. You know, we need Bible college colleges, you know, ministries online bible schools i hope this online bible school is doing something in your life uh bringing revelation knowledge into your life into your spirit man and um and and transforming that logos that written word into a rema word of god in your life so it can transform your life i wasn't born this well this way i was transformed transformed by the rema power word of god coming into my life and transforming my life that can happen to you but you to release your faith let go of that, of the other stuff. Let go of that and embrace what God is doing, what the Holy Ghost wants to do in your life. In Acts chapter 14, it records um, Paul's uh, first missionary journey. And, uh, you know, the only thing that he had, the only equipment that he had was the, was the, the Word of God. He didn't have anything else. He didn't have a... Uh, a Bible school coming along with him. He had disciples, of course, who went with him, but he didn't have priests and, and Pharisees or uh, didn't have any sound equipment, didn't have a marketing strategy, didn't have a, uh, a war horse truck. He just had the Word of God and he preached the Word of God, preached what Jesus had said and, and, uh, and powerful what happened there. Um, and um, Paul testified to the council um, at Jerusalem and uh, that God had confirmed the preaching of the word with signs and wonders. Um, what I mean by the council, I mean the, the, the apostles, that, um, that when he finished his first journey, he, uh, missionary journey, he came back to the apostles' uh, council in Jerusalem and testified and confirmed what God had done. During um, Paul's second missionary journey, he went back to, to visit those uh, churches that established. And, you know, they're already established. Sometimes it takes uh, missionaries uh, a whole generation to establish churches. But here they are, they're establishing churches. And he went back to encourage them and strengthen them uh, in the book of Acts. And uh, because they already, because they were founded on the Word of God, founded on the Word of God, and the power of God worked in their lives. Um, Paul's success wasn't, and it wasn't because of, uh, of the crucifixion and resurrection had only just occurred. Uh, it was because he preached the word of God. And he used the name of Jesus under the authority and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So the, there's three things. The preaching of the word did three things. It brought conviction. It brought the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, and it brought miracles. Uh, and, and it brought the revelation knowledge of the Holy Ghost. You know, the miracles brought their credentials. You know, we talked, um, Dr. Wayne mentioned that uh, yesterday on Sunday. 
it was the miracles that brought the credentials uh, of the name of Jesus and the, you know and the power of God and the and the name of Jesus and through that the preaching of that you know miracles were released and that was their credentials they didn't need anything else Acts 16 6 now when they had gone through uh, Fiagra, Figra and the regions of Galatia they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia love talking about this notice there that the Holy Spirit guided and directed the, the apostle uh, it wasn't the time to go to Asia wasn't the time to go to Asia the Spirit wasn't guiding them to go to Asia he was, uh, the Holy Spirit was guiding them to go to Greece and so they, they, they didn't go to, to Asia, they went to Greece instead. And the, the power of God just uh, blessed everything they did because they were obedient to the word, they were obedient to the guidance and direction of the Holy Ghost. They went through Gr Greece and um, salvations and healing and deliverance and the powerful ministry and the Holy Spirit was there. Um, and, and you know what, the, the, uh, the Holy Spirit is still here on earth today doing the exact same things that, that he did to the Apostle Paul and the disciples. He's doing exactly the same thing today, guiding and directing us. And in this case, you know, the Apostle Paul listened to what the Holy Ghost was saying and he didn't go to Asia, he went to Greece instead. And, the, and the just amazing things happened. God blessed them, the Holy Spirit was with them. Um, and, 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 and amazing things happened in their life. The Holy Ghost is still doing those things today. Acts um, 16, 29 to 31. And then he called for a light and, and, and um, for a light, ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. This is the, the jailer. You know, they were put in jail. They were preaching the gospel and they were put in jail. They went to, went to, um, to Greece and got put in jail. You think, well, what happened there, fellas? You know, you'd made a wrong turn. But no, no, it wasn't a wrong turn at all. That was God's purpose for them to get them in that jail and to, to see the jailer born again in his whole family and just and a brand new church started off in that city uh, because of what they did. And so uh, he ran in and he, um, and he brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? The jailer said, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved, you and your whole household. So th this is a testimony of, of what happened when they were obedient to the Holy Ghost, that God just blessed them with signs and wonders and miracles, healing and deliverance when, when they were obedient to the Word of God, obedient to the deliverance, uh, to the guidance of the Holy Ghost, I should say. Just going, I just want to go back to and have a look at, um, you know, the, about this thing about faith. You know, we need the faith. We need faith. Uh, in Galatians 2 verse uh, 16 and Galatians 2 verse 20, the more accurate translation talks about the faith in Jesus, but the more accurate translation um, of those two scriptures, Acts 2 16 and Acts 2 20, is that it, it should be translated the faith of Jesus Christ. And uh, I know I spoke a little bit about that, but I just want to touch on that again because it's so important that we need the, the faith of Jesus Christ, the faith of the Son of God, and that supernatural faith uh, into our lives. Uh, you know, that faith lives inside of us as well. We live by the faith of Jesus Christ. We live by the faith of the Son of God. We use His faith. We use it His way, not our way. We use it His way. We often spend hours praying and believing God for material possessions and ministry when God has already uh, has a ministry for us. God already has something for us. We, we pray, you know, we see something, we see someone doing something, we think, oh, well, you know, you see the, how they're well promoted and well presented and we want that because that's what we want. Our pride wants that, you know, but listen, hey, we've got to have what God wants in our lives, not what we want. You know, and, and, and as we uh, embrace, you know, and we develop the faith of, of Jesus Christ, the faith, in Je faith of Jesus Christ, I should say, that supernatural faith, you know, God will guide and direct you anywhere. You know, we pray for this, pray for that, but, you know, let's pray for God's will to be done in our lives, for God's purpose to be done in our lives. You already are created for significance. You're created to make a difference. So the only way that's going to happen is we do it God's way. 
not running after it and doing it our own way, but following after God's way. So Acts 18, um, verse 11, and, and he continued, this is Paul, in Corinth there for a year and six months, teaching, teaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. Acts 19, 17 to 20, this became known both to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of Jesus was magnified. And many who believed came confessing and telling their deeds and telling their sins. And also many of those who practiced magic uh, brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them in a total 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of God, the word of God, God grew mightily and prevailed. The word of God, when it's preached, will transform you, transform your life. Like I said, I wasn't born this way. I was transformed by the power of God when, when the power of God came into my heart and came into my life. And uh, he became my, my Lord and Saviour. So lives were changed when the word was preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the word grew mightily in Ephesus and the whole city was transformed. The whole city was transformed just through the preaching of the word. And the word, when the word's given its right places in churches uh, today, it will also preach, the, uh, uh, will also have the same impact on people's hearts and lives as we see in the book of Acts. When the word is given its rightful place and preached under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, it will also transform people's lives, just like it did in the book of Acts. See, there are three phases to the word. There's three phases to the word. You know, um, the first one is that the word became flesh. John uh, 1 verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and, it be and we, beheld, we beheld his glory. The glory of, uh, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, and, and that's what the, the preaching of the word is about, the, uh, what the word's about. The first phase is that it, the word become flesh. You know, God loved us. God loves us and he wants to rescue us. He set about a plan of salvation right, way back then when, when Adam and Eve fell. And he's still loving us. That's the thing that I, what got me when I, when I was, went to a, a, I went to church and, and uh, gave my heart to all. The first thing that got me was that God loved me. God loved me. And, um, you know, so God loves us. He wants to rescue, wants to rescue the world. So he did that by inserting Jesus Christ supernaturally at the right time of history. And he's, re he's inserted you supernaturally at the right time in history as well. Why should it be any different between what Jesus, what happened to Jesus and what happened to us? Second stage was that the word was spoken. The word was spoken in the book of Acts and they spoke about Jesus and the power of his name and, 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 uh, and, and he confirmed who he was through all the miracles he can, when he was inserted, uh, reincarnated, incarnated, incarnated uh, you know, uh, in, in the word become flesh. Uh, he did all those miracles to confirm who he was and where he'd come from. And that uh, if you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. And, uh, you know, people began, began to get a revelation that God loved them. And that's still happening today. I, like I talk about my re revelation that God loved me and, and God loves us. He wants to rescue us. So the word became flesh. Uh, and then the spoken word. We, we have the spoken word in the book of Acts. And then we have the written word, the Rema word of God uh, in, in, the, in the revelation knowledge uh, that came through uh, Paul and Peter and John. The revelation, you know, the Logos became the Rema word of God. So they're the three stages of the word. The word through Jesus was the Father's word that was given to men. It was the healing word, the miracle word, the performing, uh, miracle performing word and the word of God. You know, God prophesied that uh, he was going to send the Messiah. And, uh, and Jesus confirmed that he was Messiah, you know, with, with, with the words that he spoke. And, uh, and they declared and decreed and, and spoke out their words. The word 
Logos preached by the apostles and the disciples was the living word, the Rema word. And that life-giving word changed people's lives under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And miracles started happening when, um, you know, the preaching of the word under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because of what Jesus said, you, these signs will follow them that believe. Um, all those, uh, those will who believe and, and they will um, uh, cast out demons, uh, speak with new tongues, um, pick up serpents, uh, drink any deadly poison, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These were the words that Jesus spoke. So they spoke their words and they, Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel and to make disciples. And, uh, and they went and they were obedient to the word and they spoke about all those words. And, uh, and as they did that, you know, the anointing of the word and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the, uh, uh, the speaking in tongues, uh, on the, from the day of Pentecost, all of that started happening on, upon the preaching of the word and lives were transformed. The whole world was turn, turned upside down. We can do that too as well right now, folks. We can turn the world upside down with the preaching of the word, the preaching of the name of Jesus, the power of the name of releasing the, uh, the power of the name of Jesus, the power that's been given unto you to rule and reign, to take dominion, to take authority that's been given to us by and with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we can turn the world upside down as well. In this great end time harvest, power of God still moving today. Sure, there's going to come to a time when it's not going to, ha when it's not going to happen. But in the, while, while it's happening, let's get into it. <laughs> let's get into it. So when God comes into our lives, he brings his whole nature. He brings that new birth, that everlasting life. Uh, and that measure of faith in that supernatural faith into all of our lives. That nature, that faith, uh, that life transforms us uh, and it has to be sustained and fed on the word of God. We, our spirit man needs feeds on the word of God. We don't live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceeds from the word of God. And we start acting on the word. We're stepping out on the word. That's what faith's all about, stepping out on the word. And we live in the word. We le allow that supernatural faith to grow in our hearts and develop in our hearts. And then we see it manifesting in all the areas of our lives. We see our ministry begin, begin to develop that God's created us for. We see that beginning to minister and to manifest um, around about our lives. When we get, and, uh, you know, we get connected back to God again. And that's the, that's the, the reason why Jesus came, to connect us back to God again. So there's that flow of the Holy Ghost. He does a work in us so we can do a work through us. So we're connected to God and that power and that anointing of God begins to flow through our lives. Powerful, isn't it? Exciting. We live in an exciting time. God's doing something, building up to something amazing. Let's get involved. Let's get involved. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking to you this morning. Uh, thanks for joining me. It's been a great day. I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, don't forget um, tonight, uh, 7.30 and each night this week, there's somebody on, presenters and uh, powerful anointing of, of the Word of God being preached. And tomorrow and uh, 8 o'clock, uh, Pastor Rob, Pastor Tracy, and then every morning at 8 o'clock, uh, every night at 7.30, uh, there's some amazing presenters. So uh, get involved and, and be changed and be transformed. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day in Jesus' name.